Yes. Uh, today we are going to talk about the acute sports injuries and its management in the lower extremity. This is uh, lecture number four. And uh, in, in this lecture, we are going to talk, uh, discuss about the acute injuries in the lower extremity. So the important uh, injuries uh, in this the problem. All right. So the issues uh, in the uh, lower extremities commonly we face uh, during the sport. Next, Achilles tendon injury, and the third, anterior cruciate ligament injury, and the hamstring strain. So these injuries are considered acute injuries, right? So you know these injuries we expected uh, in a very fast manner. So in the last lecture we have discussed about uh, the difference between the acute injuries and the chronic injuries. So the acute injuries means, you know, if, you, if the onset of injury is sudden, uh, you can say it is uh, uh, categorized under the category of acute injuries. Uh, but in the chronic injuries, if it is a long-term injuries, right, so if it is due to the microtrauma or if it is a gradual onset injuries are considered as chronic injuries, right? So this is the difference between acute and the chronic injuries. So the first thing, uh, the first acute injury uh, that is possible in the lower extremity is ankle strain. So this you commonly uh, can uh, find uh, such type of uh, injuries uh, in a different type of things and in ankles. So the first type you can say the inversion sprain. So you know, uh, so if the leg or if the foot is going in an inverted position, there is a possibility of uh, sprain in the uh, some ligaments uh, in the ankle region. So the most common and result due to the lateral ligaments of the ankle joint. So the which ligament is usually involved? So you can say the anterior talofibular ligament, right? So this is the ligament which gives the supports to the lateral aspect of the ankle joint. So if the ankle joint goes in a in, uh, inverted position, right? So you can see, so you get inversion sprain. So the next type, it is just opposite. You can say it is aversion sprain, right? So here what happened, the ankle will go in a averted position, right? So you can say, what do you, what do you mean by avert? It is, you can say it is a pronation, right? So inversion, you can say supination of the ankle joint and aversion means you can say it's a pronation. I think there are some issues, uh, right? So the foot is twisted outwards. Right, so what happened in this uh, pronated uh, foot, you know, you get injury to the medial ligaments, right? So the foot is twisted outwards. So this foot is twisted outwards means you can say it is a pronation, right? So pronation of the foot. So which ligament is commonly involved? Uh, the commonly involved ligament is the deltoid ligament, right? You can say uh, the, uh, the ligament which is present in the medial aspect of the uh, angle joint is uh, deltoid ligament. So if the foot is going in a pronated position, or you can say if the foot is going in an averted position, there is a possibility of injury to these ligaments in the medial side. So it is, uh, uh, you can say it is averted sprain, or you can say pronated foot. So patient will have pain on the inner side of the ankle. So these are the two common sprains, that is inversion sprain and aversion sprain. Apart that there is a third type in the ankle region that is known as high ankle sprain, right? You know, uh, this is the third type. Uh, it is known as high ankle sprain. So what does it mean? High ankle sprain means there is the possibility of involvement of a ligament injury around the ankle region, right? So injury to the ligaments around the ankle. So the any ligaments which are uh, injured surrounding the, uh, surround the ankle joint, you can say it is high ankle sprain. So the ligaments above the joint, so especially you can say the syndesmosis ligaments, right? You know, there are some ligaments uh, which are present in the inferior talofibular joint. So if these ligaments are get injured, you can say it is high angle strain. So, uh, so far we have discussed about three different types of angle strain, inverted strain, averted strain, and the high angle strain, right? So during inversion, that is supination, if you get any uh, injury uh, to the lateral aspect of the ankle you can say that is inversion sprain or during pronation that is averted foot you get injury to the deltoid ligament that is aversion sprain 
and the third one is high angle strain right high angle strain means the injury around the ankle joint especially um, above the ankle joint that is uh, injury to the uh, inferior talofibular ligaments right so uh, that is syndesmosis injury you can say it is a high angle strain so these are the different type of uh, angle strains so according to the signs and symptoms right the angle strain can be classified into three types uh, grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 so uh, what happened to the tendon right what is the grade of tear uh, in these tendons and so there is no tear partial tear and the complete tear right so in the grade 1 you can suspect there is a uh, no tear right so there is a slight rupture uh, in the grade 2 there is a 50 percentage of the uh, tendons are involved and in the grade 3 you can say the complete rupture of the tendons and what about the functional ability right so how what is the functional activity of these players right you can say there is limited right it, the uh, functional activity is not that much limit uh, limited in such uh, players um, in grade 1 and uh, some part of the functional activities are limited in grade 2 and in the grade 3 that is in the complete tier or in the grade 3 strain the total function of the subjects or the players will be uh, affected and what about the pain status you can say in the grade 1 it is minimal and grade 2 it is moderate and grade 3 it is severe right so what about the swelling the same minimum moderate and severe right so there is minimal swelling in grade 1 moderate swelling in the grade 2 and severe swelling in the grade 3 what do you mean by ecchymosis right ecchymosis means the rupture of the small blood vessels around the ankle region so generally you cannot find a ecchymosis in grade 1 and you have a small uh, in the frequently you can have a rupture and in the grade 3 you have a severe uh, rupture of the blood vessels around the region and what about difficulty in bearing the weight so you cannot uh, you cannot do all the activities no and uh, bearing weight is usually affected and in the grade 3 the whole body bearing weight bearing activities will be limited in the grade 3 so these are the uh, three different types of uh, grades of angle strain grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 so according to the signs and symptoms right so according to the uh, involvement of the tendon according to the functional ability according to the pain according to the swelling according to the ecchymosis and according to the weight bearing activities so let me explain about the important uh, components of the management right how these uh, patients or the players are uh, treated so must manage pain and the swelling right so we talk we the common procedures common physical therapy procedures can be used to reduce the pain and the swelling and especially there are some special type of orthoses are uh, used uh, to stabilize or to immobilize the angle region so it is known as half shoe shaped foam pads are applied applied to uh, support this area or to immobilize this region and you can go for bed compression wrap so this is a type of uh, cold application or you can say it is a ice applications right so you can go for ice applications uh, the main purpose of applying this ice is to reduce the pain and to reduce the swelling right so uh, these are the two major um, the purpose of applying ice immediately after the uh, sprain so apply ice for 20 minutes and repeat every hour for 24 hours so for every 1 hour or every 2 hours you can repeat the application of the ice Uh, this should be continued for about 24 hours. so this is the uh, these are the common management uh, for the angle strain so it may be a, any any type of uh, strain uh, any type of uh, injury that is either it may be a, a inversion strain or eversion strain or the high angle strain so you can use this management right apart from that right continue apply the ice over the course of for the next 3 days right so keep the foot elevated as much as possible this we have already explained right always you know whenever if you have any injury uh, in the lower extremities always try to keep the limb in a elevated position right to prevent the collection of fluids or to prevent the uh, collection of swelling in the particular region and uh, to promote the uh, good healing or to promote the uh, healing process right so we should avoid the weight bearing for at least 24 hours right you know Uh, if there is a um, uh, partial rupture or complete rupture or uh, if any any percentage of rupture is there so if you allow the person or allow the player to go for uh, further play or further activities there is a chances of further rupture of the uh, ligament so uh, it is necessary to uh, 
take or it is necessary to advise the player to avoid the weight bearing for at least 24 hours and then begin the weight bearing as soon as right so you know when we can start the uh, weight bearing so once the subject or once the player is ready or once the player's uh, pain and swelling and other uh, symptoms are reduced you can allow the person for weight bearing process right return to participation should be gradual and dictated by healing process right so you know um, you have to allow the person right so you have to always monitor the player whether the pain swelling and the other signs and symptoms are reduced then you can allow the person for or you can allow the person to participate in the uh, games so these are the overall management right uh, the common management if you find any player um, or if you find any participant who uh, face um, acute strain in the uh, field or in the ground so the next one is anterior cruciate ligament injury right so this this is the common injury that you can so this is the second injury which you can uh, uh, suspect in the knee joint so this is the common uh, injury right so anterior cruciate ligament injury so more than 100000 anterior cruciate ligament injuries per year right so it is noted or it is surveyed that more than 100000 uh, injuries right anterior cruciate ligament injuries are uh, found or uh, noted in a year right so the most common biomechanical factors uh, the straight hips and the knees, right? So when there is a possibility of um, this anterior cruciate ligament injury means whenever the hip and the knees are straight or in a neutral position, if there is a sudden force to the knee joint, right? Sudden rotatory force at the knee joint, which may produce anterior cruciate ligament, right? So this is a very important mechanism of anterior cruciate ligament injury. So whenever the hip and the knee is in a straight position, right? So that means it is in a neutral position, and the, there is a sudden rotatory force at the knee joint or a torsional force at the knee joint, which can produce injury to the anterior cruciate ligaments, which may lead, or uh, sometimes if there is any subluxation creating abnormal shear force on the meniscus. This will cause meniscus injuries along with the ACL injury. So sometimes if there is a subluxation, right? So means that means the partial dislocation of the um, uh, knee joint, right? So which may produce a force, abnormal force in the meniscus and the anterior cruciate ligament, right? So which may rupture the uh, both meniscus as well as the anterior cruciate ligament, right? So this is the possible mechanism for anterior cruciate ligament injury. So when you see the epidemiology. So the young women are two to eight times more likely than young men to injure the anterior cruciate ligament, right? So there are some studies uh, shows that uh, the probability of getting anterior cruciate ligament injury is more in the women, right? Two to eight times more likely than the young men. So in the young school athletes, 52.8 percentage were lower extremity sports related injuries, right? Among that, 25 percentage of injuries are ACL injuries. Among all the lower extremity injuries we can suspect we can expect more injuries in the anterior cruciate ligament right so it is um, uh, not or uh, it is uh, found that 25 percentage of the injuries are anterior cruciate ligament injuries so what are the causes of anterior cruciate ligament tear so intense impacts or collisions right so if there is any direct uh, force or there is a direct contact forces right so if there is a direct contact force over the anterior crochet ligament, so uh, or direct uh, collision, uh, right, which may produce a tear of the anterior crochet ligament, and there is a sudden or a rapid change in the direction. So, for example, a player is uh, moving forward and suddenly he is changing the direction. Um, so, there is a possibility of rotatory force at the anterior crochet ligament, and if the force is exceeds uh, or if the force is more than that uh, anterior crochet. There is a possibility of here to the anterior cruciate ligament and the same way the sudden stopping right so a player is uh, running very fast and if he stops suddenly the force will be transferred to the anterior cruciate ligament and there is a possibility of uh, rupture of this anterior cruciate ligament and uh, you can say if there is an incorrect uh, landing right so, so someone is jumping from the height and if he is not landing properly uh, the force will be transferred to the anterior cruciate ligament and there may be a chance right if there is abnormal movement or abnormal position of the limb which may produce or which may lead the rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament so it is uh, observed or it is noted that uh, along with the anterior cruciate ligament injury 
there are some other soft tissues right so you can find there are some other soft tissues around the knee joint right so there are possibility of involvement of injury to the menisci or involvement of injury to the articular cartilage or involvement of injury to the collateral ligaments so you know uh, there are two menisci which is present in the knee joint medial and the lateral menisci right so along with these anterior cruciate ligaments uh, there are 50 percentage of possibilities of injury to these menisci right either it may be a medial menisci or the lateral menisci and below the menisci are uh, the bones that is the distal end of the femur and the upper end of the fem uh, tibia is covered with the cartilage that is known as articular cartilage right so this cartilage may also get involved or may also get ruptured so what are the possibilities around 30 percentage is for articular cartilage involvement next the collateral ligaments right so you have medial and the lateral collateral ligaments right which are present in both the sides medial side and the lateral side so again this is for about 30 percentage right possibility as involvement of these collateral ligaments what are the signs and symptoms right so when you uh, find a uh, player with anterior cruciate ligament injury so the uh, player shows some important signs and symptoms right so which will give you an idea about the person has injury in the anterior cruciate ligament these are the common signs and symptoms so you can find a sound right feeling or hearing a pop in the knee at the time of injury right so the player used to say i got a sound when i am uh, doing or when i am playing i got a sound in the knee joint right so i had a pain uh, so this uh, subjective information is a very important information so which may uh, give the detail which may give some idea about the uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury apart from that the subject has severe pain on the outside and back of the knee so in the outer outer part of the knee joint and the back of the knee the subject has severe pain and you can find swelling right so the knee swelling which progressively worsens and if you palpate the region right if you palpate the outer aspect of the knee joint you can find the tenderness right so these are the uh, important signs and symptoms right first one the subject information that the patient uh, the player says that he has a popping sound when he is playing right when he got injured the anterior cruciate ligament and there is a pain around the knee joint and swelling you can find there is a uh, localized swelling in the knee area and uh, if you palpate that area there is a tenderness around the knee joint same like ankle sprain uh, the anterior cruciate ligament injury also graded into three types grade one grade two and grade three so what does it mean grade one here the ligament is mildly damaged it has been slightly but is still able to keep the knee joint stable right so you know here you know the rupture is very very light right it has been slightly stretched right so you know because of this abnormal forces or abnormal position this acl in acl is get little bit stretched than its normal length and but the stability of the joint is good right so if you find these features you can say it is grade one acl injury but in grade two it is partial here or you can say partial rupture of the anterior cruciate ligament so this uh, you can see through the uh, mri right magnetic resonance imaging right so the ligament is stretched to the point where it becomes loose right so you know the stability of the joint is disturbed and you can find there is a partial tear of the ligament and the grade 3 this type of sprain is mostly uh, referred as the complete tear of the ligament right so there is a total cut right so there is a no contact between the proximal and the distal uh, attachments right so you know there is a total cut of this uh, ligament so you can say it is a grade 3 uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury and there is a total instability of the knee joint so the ligament has been split into two pieces and you cannot find the stability in the, the in the knee joint so the knee joint is unstable so these are the three grades um, of anterior cruciate ligament injury right so the grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grade 1 means a symbol it is slightly stretched grade 2 means you can say it is a partial tear and the grade 3 means you can say it is a complete tear of the anterior cruciate ligaments so what is the treatment right so you have two different type of approaches for anterior cruciate ligament injury according to the severity right so you have both uh, surgical and non surgical treatment so the depending on the level of injury may be needed to reconstruct the anterior cruciate ligament within the knee joint right 
so uh, that generally uh, for the partial tier and the complete tier right so 50% of the partial tier cases and the 100% of the complete tier patients will be indicated for surgery so uh, there are two different type of surgeries are uh, performed right one is iliotibial band reconstruction surgery and patellar tendon reconstruction surgery right so the iliotibial band reconstruction surgery was introduced by Ernest Hey Groves Uh, who is a german scientist and the patellar tendon uh, reconstruction surgery is um, found by willis campbell he is a american scientist right so the surgery is only needed if there is uh, the, if the uh, there are some indications so if the rupture is complete rupture right so if there is a total uh, uh, instability of the knee joint this subject uh, this uh, patient uh, players are indicated for surgery so immediately after injury what happen what are the treatment right so you, uh, this is the common treatment for all type of sports injuries so the rise is the treatment right so what do you mean by rise a rest ice compression and elevation so immediately after the injury uh, take the person uh, to the um, out of the field and give complete rest right so apply the ice for every 2 hours for 20 minutes and give the crab bandage right so you apply crab bandage that is for application which provides the compression and keep the limb in a elevated position right so this is the uh, rice format right so rest keep rest uh, to uh, for immobilization apply the to reduce the swelling and to pain and compression for reducing the swelling and elevation is also for reducing the swelling so what are the non surgical treatment so you can provide the exercises once the person is once the player is uh, relieved uh, from uh, the pain and the other symptoms right after swelling decreases and weight bearing progresses right once the person is reduced to swelling or uh, reduced to pain you can go for the exercises so there are some special type of braces are available so these braces are known as rehabilitation brace and the functional brace right which give the support to the knee joint region Uh, to uh, provide the key healing of or to uh, facilitate the healing of the anterior cruciate ligament so once uh, if uh, the post, uh, player is not uh, succeeded in this non surgical treatment they may be uh, referred for the surgical treatment right so this we have already discussed about the surgical treatment so either the surgical treatment may be a reconstruction surgery with the help of iliotibial band or with the help of the uh, <coughs> patellar tendon uh, surgery reconstruction surgery right so this is the uh, our, uh, this is the outline of the treatment of anterior cruciate ligament injuries next uh, the uh, the braces we can say uh, the rehabilitation brace and the functional brace so next um, how we can prevent these injuries right so the prevention of anterior cruciate ligament injuries how we can prevent uh, these injuries commonly avoid wearing shoes with cleats in the contact sports right so you know cleats means the hooks uh, in the shoes right so or you can say the spikes uh, in the shoes you know which provide the um, which uh, which does not give the stability to the uh, knee joint so that's why we how we are supposed to avoid such type of shoes when uh, playing uh, field games and avoid wearing high heeled shoes right so try to avoid the heels uh, with high uh, high heels and avoid the sports that involve lots of twisting and contacting movements right so those who have more prone for getting anterior cruciate ligament injury uh, these players should be avoid uh, such type of games right so which involves twisting and the uh, and the rotating movements right stretch and strengthen the leg muscles right so always before uh, participating in uh, such games uh, we should allow the we should ask the, the player uh, to stretch the muscles lower limb muscles and um, the proper training and uh, proper strengthening of the limb muscles should be required so this is the brace which is commonly used that is functional knee brace which give stability to the uh, knee joint in cases of anterior cruciate ligament injury so what are the you know, precautionary steps you have to teach the patient for the proper balancing exercises and uh, provide eccentric strengthening exercises for the quadriceps muscles and the hamstring muscles and the proper training uh, to the players that is proper mechanics uh, should be taught uh, to the player and uh, the flexibility that is the uh, flexibility of the muscles right so there is uh, 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 there is a stretchability means you can say the flexibility of the hamstring muscles are required in some 
sometimes. So these are the ways that you can uh, ma maintain the or we can prevent the anterior cruciate ligament injuries. So so far we have discussed about two different type of injuries in the lower extremities. These comes under the acute sports injuries, right? So the first one we have discussed about the strain in the ankle region, and second we have discussed about the anterior cruciate ligament injury. So the third, the common uh, injury that you can suspect in the lower extremity is Achilles tendon injury. So Achilles tendon means you know this is the extension of a calf muscle, right? So it is a calf muscle means you know gastrocnemius and soleus muscle, right? So Achilles tendon injuries are common with athletes who actively use their heel, such as basketball, football, and soccer players, right? So generally uh, the players who are using their heel for their games. So there is more probability of getting injury to this, right? So actually, tendon, right? Actually, tendon means it is the extension of the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle. There are over 250,000 actually tendon injuries each year in the US, right? So uh, there are studies show that uh, around 250,000 injuries that you can suspect uh, in the actually tendon. These injuries are occurs in the athletes in their 30s or in the 40s, right? So that means in the age group of 30s and the 40s, because this is the age group where uh, there is more involvement uh, in the sports. And when you see the male and the female ratio is 10 is to 1, right? So males are more prone for these injuries, right? So 10 is to 1. And 3 to 5 percentage of the athletes are forced to leave their sports, right? So this is a survey shows that around because of these injuries, around three to five percentage of the athletes were leaving these uh, sports, their sports activities. So, actually, tendon injury is one of the most common injury in the lower extremity. And along with these injuries, right? So, along with these actually tendon injuries, you can find some important complications, right? So, some minor complications. Along with these, you can find infection of the actually and the sensation around that area will be lost that is reduced sensation and after injury you have a scar in that particular area right so this is a scarring of uh, the particular region right of a scarring of the tendon right which lost its properties and the size of the tendon will be reduced right so reduced actually is tendon and there is a recurrence that is that means re-rupturing of the achilles is a possibility right so the recurrent uh, chances of injury to the Achilles tendons are possible, right? So these are the possible uh, or minor complications uh, along with the Achilles tendon injury. What are the causes of this injury? So uh, they have found there are so many causes, right? So there are so many important causes uh, of this Achilles tendon injury. So first one, overuse of the tendon, right? So if the player or if the participant is trained for a long period of time time so there is a chances of injury micro, uh, to this uh, tendon so there may be the uh, tendon becomes uh, critic and there is a possibility of sudden rupture right so this is overuse of the tendon or stepping up the physical activity too quickly so it means without any proper warm up right so if the player is getting into the field or uh, getting into the game without proper any warm up uh, stepping up the physical activity suddenly, right? So too quickly, which may injure to the Achilles tendon, right? Not stretching enough before exercises, right? So we have to, this uh, This I have explained before, right? So, you know, before participating in any games or any, uh, any uh, play activities, you're supposed to stretch the muscles properly, right? So if you not stretch the muscles, right? So not stretching enough before the exercises, right? Before uh, participating in any game, so the next one is the wearing high heels, right? So if uh, using high heels, which increase the stress on the tendon, right? So whenever you use the high heels, there is a possibility of more stress on the Achilles tendon. So the muscle has to work more, right? So the eccentric contraction of the calf muscles will be more, so which may produce uh, the rupture or you can uh, produce an injury to this Achilles tendon. The problems with the feet possibly result from the flat feet. In some cases, uh, in uh, cases of flat feet, right? So, uh, so in such case also, what happened? There is a more pressure on the tendon, uh, more pressure on the Achilles tendon in cases of flat feet, and the muscles or tendons in the leg that are too tight, 
so in there are cases uh, there is a tight muscles are there right so there is a tight um, muscles or there are tight anterior tibial muscles or the tight uh, foot muscles right which may produce uh, if you uh, go for a sudden uh, movements or a sudden twisting movements there may be a possibility of uh, injury to this uh, tendon so uh, what are the signs and symptoms following actually is tendon injury so feeling or hearing a pop in the knee at the time of injury right so same like anterior cruciate ligament injury uh, the player may feel or the player may hear a sound uh, this sound is a ruptured sound right so it is a hearing a pop in the knee at the time of injury so the same uh, signs and symptoms there is a severe pain on the outside and back of the knee right causing inability to continue the activity the person is not able to uh, do her do his or her uh, functional activities right and inability to continue the function and there is a swelling which progressively worsens and the person will limp uh, obviously limp means the person is not able to walk properly so he used to limp Uh, so these are the signs and symptoms of Achilles tendon injury. So whenever you find a person with Achilles tendon injury, uh, these are the possible. There is a popping sound, there is a swelling, pain, and tenderness in the particular regions. What are the treatment for this tendon injury? So in severe cases, a cast is needed for six to ten weeks and surgery to repair the tendon and remove the excess tissues. So generally. you can classify this tendon injury uh, you can say again there is a slight rupture or partial rupture or the complete rupture and if uh, the sub, if the player has uh, grade 1 or grade 2 uh, you can go for the uh, non surgical treatment like you can provide the cast uh, means which which provide the support uh, to the angle region so which may be continued for 6 to 10 weeks for about uh, for about 2 to 2 and 1/2 months and once it is healed right so sometimes if it is not uh, giving a proper uh, results or proper feedback the subject will be reported for surgery or the subject will be reported for surgery to repair the tendon and remove the excess tissues in minor cases the tendon should heal on its own right so at this i told you right so what does it mean the minor case this is the uh, grade 1 or grade 2 that is mild rupture and the partial rupture so let the joint uh, let the tendon to heal its by its own so we have to provide the complete uh, immobilization we have to provide complete rest to the ankle region which uh, heal its own and if the subject has pain or uh, you can go for uh, the person will be allowed to take some anti inflammatory pain killers which will be helpful to relieve the pain sensation so the treatment will be more or less similar uh, for all type of soft tissue injuries right so the grade 1 grade 2 and grade 3 grade 1 means there is a rupture right grade 2 means there is a partial rupture and grade 3 means the complete rupture so grade 1 and grade 2 is indicated with non surgical treatment and grade 3 is totally uh, referred for surgical treatment how you can prevent this achilles tendon injuries right stretch the same right so the preventive protocols are same for achilles uh, prevention uh, of achilles tendon injury the stretch and strengthen the calf muscles right it is necessary before participating in any games right we have to stretch the total body muscles in a very proper manner so this is known as warm up right so you need a proper warm up before participating in any games right so in this uh, warm up period you have to stretch and strengthen the calf muscles and if some exercises are uh, very effect uh, very effective or if some exercises are more um uh, risk or if you feel the exercise which gives more uh, risk uh, to the tendon injury we can uh, change the pattern of exercises right so vary your exercises choose the running surfaces carefully right so always you know whenever you play uh, you have to be very careful about the terrain or the surface where you are going to play and increase the training right so the intensity very slowly right so uh, you know you have to take the proper training from the sport uh, sports coach um so you now the training will be proper right so you know the take the training very properly and increase the intensity of training very slowly so these are the um, preventive measures that you can take to prevent the achilles tendon injury and the last one is hamstring strain right so the hamstring strain is the fourth common injury in the lower extremity it comes under the acute sports injury 
so the hamstring injury is a common athletic injury right so usually uh, most of the uh, players right most of the athletes especially the runners or the marathon players or those who are having the running uh, type of activities may get this type of strain so this is uh, uh, the common athletic injury so in british football hamstring strains make up to 12 percentage of the injuries so this injury causes the player to miss two to four matches right so this is a survey a sports survey related to hamstring strain so generally once a player got injured or got strain to the hamstring muscles uh, the player cannot be able to participate in uh, two to uh, four matches so uh, the biceps uh, sorry the hamstring ha consists of three muscles biceps femoris semi membranous and semi tendinosus generally uh, the biceps femoris muscle these muscles are uh, more prone for uh, the hamstring strain and how this uh, muscle uh, is getting strained right so the hamstring strain the muscle strain to large muscle group is the result of substantial force and it may be related to an eccentric contraction due to high speed sprinting right so the general thing right you try to understand how this muscle is getting strained because of the eccentric contraction right so so you know there are two type of contractions one is concentric contraction and another one is eccentric contraction so in concentric contractions the muscle fibers are in a shortened position right and in the eccentric contraction the muscles are in a lengthened position right so the tone is maintained but there is a product the muscle fibers are in a lengthened position so uh, every muscle every skeletal muscle has both type of contractions eccentric and the concentric contractions but the eccentric contraction force is increased right when a person is uh, running so the eccentric contraction of the hamstring muscle is more so if the muscle is not able to maintain that force there is a possibility of strain in the hamstring muscles right so this type of uh, strain is known as type 1 or sometimes it may be due to excessive stretching right so if the muscle is stretched beyond the limit uh, beyond its length there is a possibility of strain to the hamstring muscles that is type 2 type of hamstring strain so the hamstring strain is uh, classified into two types one is type 1 and another one is type 2 right type 1 is due to the eccentric force and type 2 is due to the stretching of the hamstring muscles when you see the causes right what are the causes of hamstring strain so the causes of injury are classified into two types according to the uh, involvement right so one it is intrinsic and another one is extrinsic right so the first type is intrinsic causes right what does it mean intrinsic causes means it is related to the subject or it is related to the player right so the person related causes are known as intrinsic causes so it depends upon the age and uh, and it depends upon the high rates of localized tissues right so if there is presence of localized tissues and if the hamstring strength right so if the hamstring strength is very much reduced right so weak hamstring muscles or if the flexibility of the quadriceps muscle is weak that is reduced quadriceps flexibility or if the mechanism the running mechanism or the running uh, the running uh, position is not perfect right so the movement of the joints right so during running right so the hip knee and ankle so, so that is known as poor running style so these are the causes from the person itself from the player itself so these causes are known as intrinsic causes second the second category of uh, causes are known as extrinsic causes which is apart from the uh, subject or apart from the player. so this is uh, extrinsic causes so the first one is fatigue right if the muscles are trained too much right the muscle is already trained or the muscle is already dead and if the person is or over training or excessive training and which may leads to strain to the hamstring muscles or the second one is the position player position in related to the game so these are the causes of hamstring strain and what are the signs and symptoms of hamstring strain so the signs and symptoms are more or less same so there is a possibility of tearing of the muscles according to the uh, severity so you can find uh, the rupture of the muscles right hamstring muscles tearing of the muscles or there is a increased tightness in the muscles right the muscle become tight and uh, you can find there is a spasm in the uh, hamstring muscles 
you can find severe pain behind the upper leg right so the person uh, experiences pain in the upper uh, back uh, uh, upper uh, posterior aspect of the leg region and there is a spasm in this region and bruising means you can see this picture this is bruising there is a you can see there is a um, rupture of the local blood vessel and you have a swelling in that region and possible popping sensation so these are the signs and symptoms of hamstring strain so the symptoms right so the signs and symptoms for all type of uh, soft tissue injuries are more or less same uh, so in in cases of hamstring strain also you can find there is a popping sensation or popping uh, sound whenever there is a movement you can find there is a popping sensation so this hamstring strain can be classified right so there are six different regions used when analyzing from the hamstring muscles right so they have classified in which part of the hamstring muscle is get involved or which part of the hamstring is got strain so the first one is proximal tendon right it means the origin of the hamstring muscle right so this is known as proximal tendon you can see in the picture pt and second one is proximal muscle tendon junction right so in the junction right so that is known as proximal muscle tendon junction and the muscle belly right so you take the muscle belly uh, the proximal muscle belly right so that is noted denoted like pmp that is proximal muscle belly same like proximal muscle tendon junction there is part that is known as distal muscle tendon junction right distal muscle tendon junction right so the between the tendon and the muscles and the distal muscle belly muscle belly and proximal muscle belly and the distal muscle belly and same way there is a possibility of injury in the distal tendon so these are the um, areas or the uh, uh, regions or locations where the hamstring muscles can be strained right so these are the six locations right the proximal tendon proximal muscle tendon proximal muscle belly distal muscle belly distal muscle tendon junction and distal tendon so these are the locations where the hamstrings can be strained so you can localize the um, the strain and uh, what are the grades same like other type of uh, soft tissue injuries in the lower extremity there are uh, three grades right so all the grades are also same so the first grade discomfort in the back of the thigh right so there is a, a slight rupture or you can say there is a slight pain in the back of the uh, thigh region um, the person feels a slight discomfort uh, in the back region uh, in the back of the thigh and the person can walk and there is a little swelling in that particular or in the uh, strained area so this is uh, the grade one so if the player shows such type of features you can say it is grade one strain or grade one hamstring strain in grade 2 strain gait will be affected and they will most likely end up limping off the pitch so the person's uh, movement will be affected right so the person cannot able to walk and immediately he will be uh, making the limping movements and he will be trying to come out from the pain will be uh, the sudden pain and it will be increased in a very severe manner and if you touch that area uh, the person feels more pain so this is uh, if the uh, player shows such features you can say it is grade 2 hamstring strain and the grade 3 there is a tear involving half of or the full muscle there is a total uh, means you can find there is a partial or the complete rupture of the hamstring muscles right the person is not able to walk inability to walk and may need crutches right because you know uh, the person cannot be able to uh, put the weight uh, through his limb so he need crutches to walk and the person has severe pain and weakness and you can find there is a considerable amount of swelling and bruising on the particular region right so that we have already uh, localized or we have uh, told we have discussed about uh, the possible areas of getting strain six uh, possible uh, areas where the hamstring muscles can be strained so how you can treat the hamstring strain uh, the same like uh, the management for other soft tissue injuries uh, the rise so start with the rest right give complete rest to, to the hamstring muscles um the uh, apply ice immediately uh, for every 2 hours uh, you can apply for every 10 to 15 minutes uh, give some compression bandage with the help of uh, uh, the, the grub bandages 
and keep the limb in a elevated position at least 40 to 60 degree in a elevated position right which will be helpful to reduce the swelling and the pain also will be reduced so apply the ice for 10 to 15 minutes using cold pads every 3 to 4 hours for the first few days compression with an elastic bandage or to be grip stockings right so the special types of uh, stockings are available socks are available right so you can go for pneumatic compression right so uh, you can go with uh, any of this uh, uh, approach uh, physical therapy approach uh, for the compression and medical therapies uh, for the medical treatment you can go for uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drug for pain relief and you can go for simple analgesics uh, you can go for some growth factors uh, vitamin to accelerate the healing process right so injection of terminal right so these are the localized pain relieving um, methods to reduce the pain uh, injection of terminal is or activision immediately after the injury right so to which reduce the pain uh, in the uh, localized region so these are the um, conservative and the medical treatment for uh, hamstring uh, injury so how you can rehabilitate so always you know um, you have to stretch the muscles properly uh, uh, before participating in any games right so start once the patient can walk without pain after 4 to 6 days and you can start with the light uh, jogging exercises and the stretching is a very important uh, component or very important part uh, to prevent prevent the hamstring strain so increase rate of recovery and minimize the long term loss of range of motion by minimizing the scarring formation right so you know the i have shown some important uh, stretching procedures how you can stretch the hamstring muscle so uh, hamstring muscles apart from that there are some soft tissue uh, methods right soft tissue release techniques are available this these are the special uh, techniques which will be helpful to uh, Uh, treat the hamstring strain so the muscle energy technique or you can apply the deep ischemic pressure right apply the pressure for uh, 90 seconds this deep ischemic pressure or a special type of massage that is kneading massage or sometimes there is a possibility of tightness of the muscles myofascials myofascia around the hamstring region so you can go for the myofascial release techniques or finally the kinesio taping procedure right so these are the method soft tissue methods right soft tissue release techniques Uh, for the treatment of the hamstring strain so uh, i hope uh, you have all understand the soft tissue injuries right so especially acute soft tissue injuries in the lower extremity so the first one we have discussed about the ankle sprain especially the three types of ankle sprain that is inverted ankle sprain everted ankle sprain and the high ankle sprain and second we have discussed about the anterior cruciate ligament injury uh, the different types of anterior cruciate ligament injury it's uh, conservative and the surgical management uh, third we have discussed about the, the important part that is achilles tendon injury right uh, the fourth we have discussed about the hamstring strain right it uh, application um how the different grades of strain and um, its management so 